guys, Angel here. Welcome to day number three of seven days of YouTube with yours truly, Angel Richardson. So again, I'm going to give you guys two questions and two answers in this video. I feel like Chuck Woolery. Most of you guys won't know who Chuck Woolery is, but do you remember from, um, oh my God, what was the show? The Love Connection where he would be like, I'll be back in two and two. Anyway, my 30 and over people crowd will know what that show is. Anyway, so here is question number one. How did you keep a smile on and remain optimistic when you were starting your business? How did you deal with times? How did you deal with the times that money was lean? Were you scared? And she goes on to say, I'm hella scared, but moving. And that's good that you're scared, but taking um, action and moving forward anyway. So your first question, how did I remain optimistic? Um, starting my business I am naturally an optimistic person just that is just how I'm wired like if there is something that is terrible going on I can just easily within a matter of seconds just see the good that can come out of it so being an optimistic person for me that's just how I am um, being optimistic and you're not naturally an optimistic person you have to intentionally think and say what can come out of this? How can I make this something good out of this? Um, as far as like remaining, um, like keeping a smile on my face, I, I don't smile every day. That I mean, I smile every day about something, but I'm not this static and bubbly every single freaking day, contrary to popular belief. Um, and so what kept me um, going in that is that I don't want to work for anybody else. Like that is... Uh, that is something that just thinking about working for somebody else now being an entrepreneur you have many bosses I mean every person that comes to my website and swipes their credit card not swipes their credit card but enters in their credit card information they are my boss and so I have several bosses now however those are bosses on my own terms I don't ever, 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 ever in a million trillion years want to work at a job, like a nine to five. You gotta be told when you can go to the bathroom, told when you can do this, like that just, just the thought of it makes me itch. Um, and so that's what kept me going. And as far as like, how did you deal uh, with times when money was lean? Now this is a mindset that you have to adopt. I don't, even if we don't have any money, I don't operate from a sense of reality at that point. Like I am ridiculous kind of when it comes to stuff like that because I can be a little bit too optimistic. And during those times when you are lean on money, that's the times when you're going to be really, really creative. Uh, Damon John just wrote a book and I don't have it. I didn't purchase it yet. It's called The Power of Broke. But I watched some of his videos when he was talking about it. And he was talking about like, even though he is mega, you know, rich, he still operates from that same mindset of being broke because it helps you remain creative. And so during those times when money is laying, honey, we live in 2016. 2016. We got phones and computers and so many things at our fingertips. You just have to really dig in and just get a little bit um a little bit more creative uh, with your business endeavors at that point until the cash flow starts to uh, come to you and starts to line up. So I hope that question, um, that answer helped you. And here is the second question. Now this question like broke my heart when I read it because I'm like, oh my goodness, are you serious? Okay, so here's the question. Are God's promises, powers, willingness the same for people who have done egregious wrongs but regret them? Not people with guilt about things they should not be guilty about, but people who have intentionally done wrong, maybe out of trying to get emotional needs met and not being mature enough to go about it in the right way, or trying to get out of a bad situation but did real harm to others. Must they basically pay penance the rest of their lives, even though they are forgiven by God in theory, but will actually 
but the actual day-to-day -day be paying for past wrongs. Like, I just want to come through this screen and just tell you, absolutely freaking not. If that was the case, like, all, like none of us would be living any kind of a life with any blessing in it because all of us, every single one of us has done something on purpose wrong to someone else. However, when God says that he will forgive you and remember your sins no more and throw them as far as the east is from the west so he remembers them no more, that's not theory. That's fact. And if you think of it in theory, like say, well, theoretically speaking, God says he's going to forgive me. That's an indication to let me know that you really don't believe that God is forgiving you. And so if you don't believe that God is going to forgive you, you're going to live in penance and you're going to intentionally punish yourself on a day to day basis. Like, oh my goodness, I just wanted to just cry. Just the thought of you thinking that just because you did something wrong, that you are going to punish yourself every single day for it. Like, no, if God was done with you or pissed with you or your time is up on this earth, he wouldn't breathe life into your nostrils every single day. I have done some horrendous things in my life, like things that should have cost me jail time for real. And I literally, I, I say this, you have to be a little bit cocky with your past. And this is what I mean when I say that. Yes, you've done some wrong things, but just to get over it, you got to kind of be a little bit cocky and just be like, yeah, I did it and what? Like, I'm still here. God is still blessing me. God is still breathing, giving me breath into my nostrils every single day. Like, who are you to make me question if I'm forgiven or not? And not that it's a particular person that you're asking for that forgiveness, but you got to say to yourself, who angel, who do you think that you are to not forgive yourself when God has already forgiven you? That's not theoretically speaking. That's not a theory. That is a fact. It is a fact that God has forgiven you. So get over your cute little fancy self and start forgiving yourself and take yourself off of the cross. Take yourself off of the punishment wheel. Oh my goodness, God loves you unconditionally. And furthermore, he knew what you were going to do before you even did it. He, for, he has forgiven you. So please, 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 I beg of you, stop punishing yourself and move on with your life. You punishing yourself, that is just the adversary, just like having a freaking field day with you to keep reminding you every single day, but remember when you did that, but remember when you did that, but remember when you did that, and I went through that. And that's what I'm saying. I had to get cocky about it and be like, you know what? Yeah, that was me, but look at me now. I'm still here and I'm doing better. Please take yourself off of that that hamster wheel of punishing yourself every single day. You're not doing yourself, your life any freaking good by continuously every single day nailing yourself to the cross. Yes, Jesus says to pick up, pick up your cross and follow me daily, but that's not the cross that he meant to bear, the unforgiveness cross. That is not the cross that we're meant to carry every single day. So forgive yourself. Write yourself a forgiveness letter and then at the end of that letter say, and I'm still here. And then ball that letter up, throw it away and move on with your fancy, beautiful, gorgeous, blessed life. I love you guys from the bottom to the top and I'll see you guys tomorrow.